and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to conduct a post balance sheet date review for subsequent event. Post means after, after the balance sheet date. This is part of completing the audit cycle. We already looked at auditing presentation and disclosure, audit contingent liabilities, and we looked at letters from clients' attorney. So this will be the third recording in this session. And basically, we're going to be looking at Amazon at an, as an example. Amazon year end is December 31st, and we're looking at December 31st, 2016. This is their balance sheet date. The audit date is signed February 9th, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2017. What does that mean? It means as far as Amazon is concerned, this is 12 31 2016. So this is, we call this the balance sheet date, the client balance sheet date this is when they this is the date of the balance sheet now then we're gonna go few until 2 9th was it 2 9 2 9 yeah February the 9th 2 9th 2017 this is the audit report date this is when the auditor audit report date this is the audit report date okay now bear in mind that sometime it may take a week or two week or so until the financial statement are issued so this may take you know a week or so let's assume on march 1st the uh financial statements are issued so this is march 1st again this is 3 1 and this is where the financial statement are issued now what do we have to know this period right here between 1231 this period right here between 1231 and 29 we call this period period subsequent to the balance sheet date this is the subsequent event period this is the subsequent event period now, this period right here, this is the financial statement processing period. The depending, you know, processing period. Okay? Now, also, we're going to have another period that this period right here after the, the financial statements are issued, we'll talk about this later on, maybe toward the end of the session, is the period subsequent uh, in which subsequent discovery of fact are made so this is the period in which subsequent discovery and we're going to look at this later on is made okay so don't worry about the subsequent period of fact are made. We're going to talk about this blue later on. So all we're going to focus on is that subsequent period for now. Once I switch back to the discovery phase, subsequent, uh, subsequent discovery of fact phase, I would let you know, I would alert you. So let's go back to the uh, subsequent events after the balance sheet date, but before the issuance of the financial statement. We already looked at the date. The auditor responsibility for reviewing subsequent events is normally limited to the period beginning on the balance sheet date and ending with the date the auditors report. Remember, simply put, 2-9 is when, when we stop, when this is when we stop our field work, basically. Now, there are two types of subsequent event required consideration by management and evaluation by auditor. There are two, basically, we're going to break down subsequent events into two types, okay? We have event that existed on the balance sheet date. So events that already existed. So if we look, if we look on at sometime on December 31st financial statements and that event existed of the balance sheet date. Those that have a direct effect on the financial statement and require adjustments. So type one adjustments is let's assume we had a contingent liability. Basically we we accrue for a contingent liability as of 1231. So as of 1231, we had that liability. Now on 115, two weeks later, we paid off the liability. Let's assume we booked um, 300,000 worth of liabilities. And now when we paid it off, when the jury came out on 1 5, 2017, they asked us to pay 3 million. Well, this is 
a subsequent event that would require adjustment. Why? Because it's it's a huge amount. We only booked one tenth of the amount. So this is contingent liability. So what we have to do here, we have to look back to see if that event existed on 1231. If the event existed on 1231, it required an adjustment. And we have we have events that did not exist on the balance sheet date. For example, let's assume on well, I was I put Valentine's date, but let's assume our uh, on 114, not 214. On 114, we had a fire. I wanted to put Valentine's Day, but uh, for Amazon, they issued their financial statements before that. So let's assume on January 14th, we had a fire. Our warehouse uh, 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 caught fire. Well, those do not have direct effect on the financial statement because those happen in 2017. So if the fire happened in 2017, it does not have fact, it does not have fact on 20. 16 financial statement however we need to disclose this information we need to tell the users yes we have uh, 5 billion worth of uh, inventory but 1 billion of them were burned in a warehouse okay so we disclose but we don't make any adjustment okay because this event affect 2017 here we are looking forward this is type 2 so type 1 is events that already existed and something happened after year end Type two is they did not exist as of 1231. So examples that that would require adjustments are that declaration of bankruptcy by a customer for an outstanding account receivable. So at 1231, if we had the receivable on the books and the client filed the bankruptcy, then yes, and if it's a major client, we have to do something about it. Settlement of litigation at an amount different from the amount recorded on the books, as I showed you in the example when I talked about it. Disposal of equipment not being used in operation at a price below the current book value. Or we sold an asset and it's way below its book value. Now we're going to look at examples for events that only require disclosure. It means disclosure means those events did not exist at 1231. Um, a decline in the market value of securities held for temporary investment or resale. That could happen. If we issued new bonds or new stocks. Well, this is a new event. A decline in the market value of inventory as a consequence of government action bearing further sale of the product. Well, this event did not exist at 1231. Uninsured loss of inventory as a result of fire, a merger or acquisition. Those are some examples for, for events that only require disclosure. Now, require disclosure for 1231, 2016, but guess what? We have to, rec everything is, will be recorded in 2017 i just want to you know this is what we don't only we don't only uh, disclose those we have to do actual journal entries but the journal entries will not affect the financial statement okay now bear in mind that auditor of accelerated filers may also have may also identify event related to internal control over financial reporting that arise subsequent to year end so basically if you are a publicly traded company and you need your uh, 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 internal control to be evaluated anything happened to the internal control you will have to It'll be considered a subsequent event. It will be treated as so. There are two categories of audit procedure for subsequent events review. So how do you discover subsequent event? Well, we have two types. We have one type is procedures normally integrated as part of the verification of the year-end account balances. So what we do, this is part of the cutoff, the valuation test. This is basically part of the, notice it's the integrated as part of the verification of the year-end balance. So this is part of the audit. So what we do, for example, if we have any receivable at 1231, if we have any receivable, any receivable, we might look for that receivable to see if we are paid on January. This is this is this is part one of the audit test. This is normal. This is part of the audit. And the type two is procedures performed specifically for the purpose for discovering events or transaction that must be recognized as subsequent event. So we do two types. Now we're going to undertake another type of auditing that we are looking specifically for events that might we might have to recognize okay so part will be part of the normal audit the first category so this category here include cutoff and valuation test as done as part of the audit test of test of balances the second category the second category are performed specifically to obtain information to incorporate into the current year account balances or footnotes as test of the completeness presentation and disclosure objective now we are we are out there looking for what looking for events looking for events what what type of event subsequent event and those subsequent event we might either have to disclose in the footnotes or we might have to make a journal entry depending on the situation how do we do so? Well, review re records prepared subsequent to the balance sheet. It's simply put, scan the journal entries for the client for major event. Look at their journal entries. See if there's anything unusual, something happened big. Review internal statement prepared 
uh, an internal statement prepared for subsequent to the balance sheet date. Look at that. Sub, look at some statements and see compare them to the prior period or compare them to last year the same period. See if there's something unusual that you will need to discuss with the client. Examine minutes issued subsequent to the balance sheet, board of directors, any stockholders meeting, because they're going to be discussing important information. See if there's anything happened since the balance sheet date. Talk to the attorney again. Correspond with the attorney. See if there's anything happened since the balance sheet date. Inquire with management about new borrowing, new commitment, new sales, acquisition, asset appropriation by a government, a contingent liabilities, unusual adjustment. Just talk to the, ask the client. Is there anything since the balance sheet date that I need to be aware of? Okay. Obtain a letter of representation. This letter is mandatory. This is going to be part of a separate recording. So don't worry. We're going to discuss this. Let's now talk about something called dual dating. Dual dating is when the audit signs the report. When does it have to sign the report? Well, let's go back to Amazon example and show you how dual dating works. Let's go back to the to the dates where we we looked at it. So let's take a look at this. Remember the audit balance sheet was 1230 the, the balance sheet date was 1231 the audit report was February 9th and let's and the financial statements were not issued until March so let's assume something happened here and let's assume on Valentine's Day 214 this is 214 something happened something happened now we are done working on the audit is dated uh, the audit report is dated 29 but something happened on 214 something major Amazon bought another subsidiary Okay, how do we have to deal with this event? It's after the field work, after the audit report, but before we issued the financial statement. So how do we have to deal with that? So let's take a look at those type of events. So occasionally the auditor determined that a subsequent event that affected the current period financial statement occurred after the date, the audit report, but before it was issued. Remember, for, for Amazon, the, the report is dated 2-9, but it, the financial statements were not issued until March 1st. So this is when the financial statements are issued. Okay, In that situation, audit and standard require the auditor to extend audit test for a newly discovered subsequent event. The auditor has two equally acceptable options for doing so. So how do you sign the uh, sign it? It's, you have two options. One is expand all subsequent event tests to the new date. So basically what you would do is you would say now, 214 so you would you will sign it as 214 and what happened you now you are responsible for anything happened between 29 and 214 okay or what you can do restrict the subsequent event review to matters related to the new subsequent event with this option the auditor issue a dual date report or you will go with option two which is safer for the auditor you will dual date it you will dual date it as 24 then you would say um, I only reviewed what happened on 214 that new acquisition so you're only limiting you have two signatures now, two signatures. One is 2-9, the audit work, audit field work, and 1-2-14 two, only saying I'm, I'm responsible for that event. So anything happened between 2-9 and 2-14, I really don't know. But for 2-14, I know what happened. But if you take option one, option one, you are responsible until 2-14. Basically, you expanded your, uh, your responsibility. Another topic we need to talk about is subsequent discovery of facts. And what is subsequent discovery of fact? Actually, let's go back and show you because I did show you what subsequent discovery of fact. Subsequent discovery of fact, when something happened in this blue, blue period. What's the blue period? After the financial statement are issued. So this is the blue period. Remember I told you once we get to it, we'll talk about it. This is after I issued the financial statement, we discovered something. What do we have to do when that happened? It could th those situations are rare, but we have to kind of basically know them because it, it could be on the CPA exam. Okay, so although rare, auditors sometimes learn after the audit fi audited financial statements has been issued that the financial statements are materially misstated. So something went wrong. Okay, for example, you missed a confirmation of account receivable. If that's the case, you you missed a major account receivable confirmation. You would see if there's an alternative procedure. Let's assume you send the confirmation for a major account receivable and you did not receive the confirmation or you discovered that the confirmation is incorrect or something to that effect. You would look for alternative procedure. You would look to see if the customer pay. If the customer pay, it means that the receivable was legitimate. Okay? So first, that's the first thing you do. Now, when this subsequent discovery of fact occurred, the auditor has the obligation to make certain that users who are relying on the financial statements are informed about the misstatement or change in the conclusion on the effectiveness of internal control. So if that's the case, we need to tell whoever is relying on this, these financial statements to not, to not rely on them because now they are misstated. 
Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, guess what? We have to issue a new financial statement, but for now, we're gonna ask for disclosure. Disclosure, if the auditor discovered that the statements are misleading after they have been issued, the most desirable action is to request that the client issue an immediate revision of the financial statement that include an explanation of the reason for the revision. So what you do is you tell the if you tell the uh, you tell the client, please reissue the financial statement. Okay, so you advise the client to issue the financial statement. That's what we're saying here. What if the client refused? You disassociate yourself from the company. You inform any agency, and you'll notify parties relying on the on the financial statement to tell them, please don't rely. The financial statements are no longer fairly represent the uh, uh, fairly represent the conditions of the company. So this is basically what you would do. Again, this is subsequent discovery of fact. This is after the financial statements has been issued. So notice we have, let me just review real quick so we don't lose track of what we did. Let me go back to that to those date. Again, we have the balance sheet date, pretty straightforward. We have the audit report, 2-9-2017. It took us um, two to three weeks to issue the financial statement. The period between the audit report and the financial statement is the period where we prepare the financial statement. And anything happened after March 1st is the period in which subsequent discovery of fact is made. So anything happened after that date. So this is basically the um, uh, subsequent event and the subsequent discovery of fact session if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class complete your homework complete your quiz and if you're studying for your cpa exam always 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 study hard this topic is tested